Hi, welcome to Discovery Quests. I hope you all are doing great today. Top 23 Untold Bizarre Discoveries of 2023 Delving into the Mysteries of Ancient Times and Cutting-Edge Scientific Discoveries The untold stories of 2023 unravel a tapestry of fascinating narratives. From the revelation of an ancient animal sacrifice pit in Spain shedding light on ritualistic practices to the resurgence of scurvy in unexpected corners of the modern world. These discoveries bridge the gap between history and contemporary challenges. Journey through the depths of the Mariana Trench. Explore the potential for communication in ancient Greece through a hydraulic telegraph. And witness the resurrection of extinct species like the dodo, bringing the past into conversation with the future. As the Earth's center turns out to be younger than its surface due to time dilation, and trilobites encased in volcanic rock offer clues to ancient geography, the untold discoveries of 2023 showcase the boundless curiosity of human exploration and the evolving tapestry of our understanding of the world. Here are some exciting and fabulous discoveries of 2023. Number 23 Thousands of Bones from 52 Creatures Discovered in Ancient Animal Sacrifice Pit The discovery of 6,770 ancient bones belonging to 52 different animals dating to the Iron Age left. Archaeologists with a big question, what on earth went on here? In a new study, researchers in Spain believe. They might have a clear answer. The Jumbo Bone Pit was recently excavated at Casas del Teruquelo, a site in southwest Spain that was inhabited during the Iron Age around the 5th century BC. After compiling their evidence, the researchers concluded that this mysterious burial ground was the site of ritualized animal sacrifice. Among the trove of bones were at least 41 horses, 6 cattle, for pigs and a single dog. The layers of dirt show the animals were buried in three sequential phases. The animals in the first two phases were buried unaltered, but the skeletons in the last phase looked as if they were butchered for meat, perhaps the study authors claim. This is evidence that the ritual sacrifice eventually turned into a feast or banquet. Waste not, want not. So, the saying goes, the remains indicate that the animals died as healthy adults, affirming that it's unlikely they simply perished due to a disease outbreak or natural disaster. Furthermore, some of the animals, particularly the horses, were laid to rest in organized pairs. Another important clue came in the form of burned vegetable matter at the site, which is typical of the remains left by burned. Offerings. It's very unusual to find hard evidence of a mass animal sacrifice in the Mediterranean during the Iron Age. Although there are a curious number of literary sources that suggest such an event did occur in ancient times. Number 22. If dinosaurs roamed the whole planet, why don't we find their bones everywhere? Every now and then, a conspiracy theorist asks the question, if dinosaurs actually existed, wouldn't their bones be everywhere? While it's odd critical thinking to disregard all the evidence we have that dinosaurs existed because we haven't found even more evidence that they exist. It is nevertheless a fun question, and one that has been answered many times for anyone who wants to hit up Google before they record. A video, first off, dinosaur fossils have been found on all continents, they aren't evenly distributed. But that isn't because of some bizarre conspiracy to plant these bones in Montana. It's because fossilization is rare and takes place only under specific circumstances. When an animal dies for it to become fossilized, it needs to be buried by sediment before being covered by many more layers of sediment. As the pressure builds up, they are compressed to form sedimentary rock during the process. Minerals seep into the encased animal bones, turning them into stone. As this requires sediment buildup on top of the animal carcass, almost all the fossils we have found have been in the seas where the sand and mud can wash over the body. Dinosaurs that die above ground rarely become fossilized. Most of the dinosaur fossils we find are from animals that were living near to a lake or river. Dr. David Button, dinosaur researcher at the Natural History Museum, explained in a piece on their website. 
Some died shortly before the area flooded and covered their remains in mud and silt. Others were washed into a river by heavy rain. One study in 2006 estimated that around 71% of dinosaurs remained unknown. Some mountainous dinosaurs could, in theory, have been swept down a mountain to a riverbed where fossilization could take place, but it's not common. As a result, we know little of their unique ADAPTIONS. In short, dinosaurs are found all over the place but only became fossilized under the right circumstances, the less said about Nephilim, mentioned at the end of the video, the better. Number 21 It may take 400,000 years to connect with alien civilizations. Scientists say a science paper has a bold answer. Even if there are tens of thousands of civilizations out there, they need to survive for thousands of years to have a chance to talk to someone else. As reported in the Astrophysical Journal, Researchers Wenji Song and Egal estimated the number of communicating extraterrestrial intelligent civilizations set us out there using two parameters, the probability of life appearing on a terrestrial planet and the stage of the planet's host, SARS evolution at which the SETI would be born. The two researchers created nine scenarios where SETIs were either rare or common. If CET is our rare in the order of 110 across the whole Milky Way, then a communicating civilization might have to survive for 400,000 years before it gets a signal from another in their best case scenario with around 43,000 CETs. It would take at least 2,000 years for a communicating civilization to get its first cosmic hello. The reason why we have not received a signal may be that the communication lifetime of human is not long enough at present. However, it has been proposed that the lifetime of civilizations is very likely self-limiting known as the doomsday argument. Due to many potential disruptions such as population issues, nuclear annihilation, sudden climate change, rogue comets, ecological changes, etc., the authors from Beijing Normal University wrote in the paper, if the doomsday argument is correct for some pessimistic situations. Humans may not receive any signals from other CET is before extinction, it is quite uncertain what proportion of terrestrial planets can give birth to life, and the process of life evolving into a SETI and being able to send detectable signals to space is highly unpredictable, the authors explain. But big uncertainty also works the other way, that there may just be very few SETIs out there, and who knows if they want to talk to us. Maybe the dark forest's hypothesis is true after all. Number 20 world's biggest iceberg is moving in Antarctica for first time in 30 years measuring for 0 square kilometers 1,500 square miles and some for 100 meters 1,312 feet thick. The city-sized iceberg A to 3A was created in August 1986 when it was calved from the Antarctic coastline, the floating. Ice chunk quickly became ground in the muddy sea floor and stayed put in the Weddell Sea. Now, satellite images have shown it has moved significantly over the past few years. According to the British Antarctic Survey, the reason for the iceberg's sudden voyage is yet to be understood. I asked a couple of colleagues about this, wondering if there was any possible change in shelf water temperatures that might have provoked it. But the consensus is the time had just come. Dr. Andrew Fleming, a remote sensing expert from the British Antarctic Survey, told the BBC it was grounded since 1986, but eventually it was going to decrease in size sufficiently to lose grip and start moving. I spotted first movement back in 2020, added Fleming. The word iceberg stems from the Dutch word eijberg, which means ice mountain, generally speaking. Icebergs that form in Antarctica are larger and flat-topped in shape, while those in the Arctic that cow from Greenland are smaller and often irregularly shaped. About 90% of an iceberg's mass is typically below the water's surface. Hence the expression tip of the iceberg used to describe a situation where only a small, visible part of a much larger problem is apparent. At a 3A briefly lost its title as the world's largest iceberg in May 2021, when a 76 detached from the Ron Ice Shelf in the Weddell Sea. 
This initially measured 4,320 square kilometers, 1,667 square miles. But it later fragmented into three pieces, even A23As, relatively small compared to the biggest iceberg of all time. This colossus was spotted in November 1956, as this was before satellite imagery. Its exact size isn't known but it was estimated to be 335 kilometers long and 97 kilometers wide to 108 by 60 miles within. Area of 31,000 square. Kilometers 12,000 square miles. That's three times larger than Hawaii's Big Island. Number 19 World's Oldest War Weapons Factory existed 7,000 to 100 years ago in Israel in a recent archaeological breakthrough in southwest Spain, the excavation of Casas del Teruquelo has unveiled a mysterious burial ground dating to the Iron Age, around the 5th century BCE. This site, containing 6,770 ancient bones from 52 different animals, has sparked intrigue among researchers. The bones, including those of 41 horses, 6 cattle, for pigs, and a dog, were arranged in three sequential phases. While the first two phases involved in altered burials, the third phase showed signs of butchery, suggesting a shift from ritualized animal sacrifice to a potential feast or banquet. The careful arrangement of equid pairs and the presence of metallic bits indicate that some horses might have been cart animals. Sacrificed simultaneously in an organized fashion, the discovery of burned vegetable matter further supports the hypothesis of ritualistic offerings. This finding is particularly significant as it provides rare, tangible evidence of mass animal sacrifice during the Iron Age in the Mediterranean, corroborating some ancient literary sources like Homer's Odyssey and Iliad. Meanwhile, in ancient Israel, evidence of organized warfare emerges from the early Copper Age, approximately 7,200 years ago. Archaeologists analyzing for 120 for sling stones from Eneser and Enzipori uncovered a standardized production of war weaponry, the sling stones sharing a specific biconical aerodynamic form were crafted to uniform specifications indicating mass production. This discovery represents the earliest evidence of warfare in the southern Levant, coinciding with a shift from non-formal sling stones to highly standardized weapons, the uniformity in weight, size, and form suggests systematic manufacturing for use by warriors, reflecting an increasingly organized approach to conflict during this period, the sling stones, often found in clusters, imply their use in barrages, disrupting enemy formations despite the abrupt disappearance of these mass-produced weapons from the archaeological record after a millennium. This revelation provides insights into the evolution of organized warfare in the Middle East over 7,000 years. These archaeological findings from Spain and Israel underscore the intricate connections between ritual practices, societal organization, and military advancements in ancient civilizations. They offer glimpses into the complexities of Iron Age burial rituals and the early stages of organized conflict, enriching our understanding of the cultural and technological dimensions of these ancient societies. Number 18 3,000-year-old funerary stone suggests prehistoric social gender roles were more fluid than thought the excavation is located in the 3,000-year-old funerary complex of Las Capellanias. In the municipality of Cauaveral de Lene, Spain, here, researchers have unearthed an ancient stella, a standing funerary stone slab featuring carvings that mark the site as belonging to important individuals. Essentially, it was a kind of tombstone, though sometimes they could be used for dedication and commemoration as well. On this particular stone, a human figure is depicted with carefully carved face, hands, and feet. The figure is shown wearing a headdress and a necklace, traditionally symbols associated with the female form, but the figure is also holding two swords and has male genitals. The mixing of these features on the funerary stone has led the archaeologists to reconsider their understanding of gender when represented by these carvings, which may have been more fluid than previously assumed. 
It would seem that such symbolism was not necessarily restricted to one gender or another, the site. At Las Capilanias, this is not the only stella to have been found at this site, so far, the archaeologists have discovered to other stones which are providing valuable insights into the funerary rituals from this era, interestingly. The site of the Las Capilanias funerary complex is located in what would have been a significant natural pathway that linked it to a river basin. Such a connection would have made it a kind of communications highway of its day, Durham University explained in a statement. The team believe the location of Las Capilanias on such a highway is significant in itself. It is possible that the stele also worked as territorial markers, not just. Funerary stones? Number 17 Earth's center is two years younger than its surface because of time dilation. Here's an unusual fact that takes a bit of explaining. The center of the Earth is around two and a half years younger than the surface, about 4.6 billion. Years ago, a hot cloud of dust orbiting the sun coalesced and cooled. As it did so, the heavier elements formed the center of the Earth while lighter elements formed the mantle and the thin layer of crust formed on the surface. This all took place at the same time, with the minor caveat that Earth has accumulated more matter in the intervening years, including potentially from planet Thea, which may have formed the moon and left mysterious structures deep within the Earth. And yet now the center is younger than the outer bits. How? A team of physicists calculated this strange fact in 2016. The team was aware that in the 1960s, theoretical, physicist Richard Feynman gave a lecture in which he stated, according to the possibly erroneous transcription, that the center of the Earth is one or two days younger than the surface because of the time dilating effects of gravity. The team write that they had seen this claim repeated without being checked likely due to proof by ethos where a scientist's status is so high that their results end. Calculations aren't questioned. However, over 4.6 billion years those fractions of seconds add up, with the team calculating that the center of the Earth is now about two and a half years younger than the surface, a sprightly approximately for billion 599 million 999,999 year old, a veritable child compared to the crust. Meanwhile, the sun's surface was calculated to be around 40,000 years older than its center, in spite of the small numerical mistake. Feynman's observation that the center of the Earth is younger than its surface is a fascinating demonstration of time dilation in relativity they concluded, and as such a very illustrative example for use in the classroom. Number 16 The Mystery of Moos with Devil's Antlers What does science say? Devil's antlers is a term associated with a fascinating phenomenon observed in moos, particularly bulls that develop abnormal and non-shedding antlers. Unlike horns in certain animals, moos antlers are shed annually. As a natural part of their reproductive and behavioral cycles, this shedding which occurs after the antlers have served their purpose in seasonal rituals like fighting and attracting mates, is crucial for moose as it helps them conserve energy by shedding up to 60 pounds of weight during the harsh winter months. Antlers, among the fastest growing tissues in the animal kingdom, showcase remarkable growth rates. For instance, white-tailed deer antlers can grow about a quarter of an inch per day. The growth of moose antlers follows a cyclic process triggered by increasing daylight, leading to heightened testosterone production by September. A surge in testosterone prompts the shedding of the velvety skin covering the antlers, revealing the impressive bony headwear. However, in rare instances, a hormonal imbalance due to factors like castration can disrupt this process, resulting in the Growth of deformed antlers that do not shed this abnormality, colloquially known as devil's antlers, is described in various ways, including peruke head and antleroma, highlighting the diversity of forms these aberrant antlers can take, despite its intriguing nature. Confirmed images of moose with devil's antlers remain scarce, adding an air of mystery to this well-documented natural phenomenon, interestingly. The phenomenon of abnormal antler growth in moose is not a recent discovery, Aristotle. 
In his 4th century BC work History of Animals documented and described this. Peculiar Occurrence This historical context emphasizes that the mystery of devil's antlers has persisted for centuries. Even though verified photographs of this unusual form of antler growth are frustratingly difficult to come by, the various names given to this condition such as cactus antlers and valericorn antlers underscore the diverse and sometimes whimsical shapes these deformed antlers can assume, further adding to the intrigue of this natural anomaly. Number 15 in ancient disease is making a comeback in parts of the USA the resurgence of scurvy. A once notorious disease affecting pirates and sailors due to a lack of vitamin C is now occurring in unexpected places despite being easy to treat by increasing vitamin C intake. Scurvy has made a comeback in some developed countries, particularly among individuals with limited access to vitamin C rich foods. Reflecting issues of malnutrition, early symptoms include fatigue, nausea, and joint pain progressing to severe complications such as swollen gums, bruising, and bleeding into joints and muscles in extreme cases. Scurvy can lead to death from complications like internal hemorrhaging. Historically, scurvy plagued mariners during long sea voyages, and its impact was especially notable in the 18th century British Royal Navy. Today, the disease is prevalent in the developing world. Where malnutrition is common but it is surprisingly re-emerging in affluent nations, factors such as economic constraints and dietary choices contribute to the rise of scurvy in unexpected populations, with those of lower socioeconomic status in wealthy countries being particularly affected. The paradoxical nature of scurvy's resurgence in developed nations highlights the importance of addressing nutritional deficiencies even in seemingly prosperous settings. A new documentary called Vitamania explores this phenomenon, shedding light on the fact that scurvy, a seemingly archaic ailment, persists in developed countries due to dietary choices influenced by economic factors. Medical professionals report an unexpected number of scurvy cases in affluent regions, emphasizing the need for public awareness and interventions to address nutritional imbalances, ensuring that a preventable and historically significant disease does not persist in modern societies. Number 14,490 million year old trilobites encased in volcanic rock could solve ancient geography. Puzzle the fossils were discovered in a little studied region of Thailand, Ko Tarutau, in a green layer of rock called a tuff. Coincidentally, this type of rock is in fact tough. It's formed when ash from volcanic eruptions settles on the seafloor and is gradually compressed into solid rock. Within the fossil containing tuff were crystals of zircon, a chemically stable, resilient mineral containing atoms of uranium which gradually decay and transform into lead atoms. As a result, researchers could use radioisotope techniques to date the zircon and thus the age of the eruption that led to the tuff and the trilobites within it. They discovered that the trilobites dated back to around 490 million years ago, during the late Cambrian period, making the tuff a rare find. Not many places around the world have this. It is one of the worst dated intervals of time in Earth's history, said co-author Nigel Hughes in a statement dot as well. As discovering 10 new trilobite species within the tuff, the researchers found 12 types of trilobite that had never been discovered in Thailand but had been found in other places, together with the dating of the tuff. This could provide clues as to where the region would have been in relation to other countries when they were all part of Gondwana, the ancient supercontinent. The researchers also believe that the study is of use to the present. Two. What we have here is a chronicle of evolutionary change accompanied by extinctions. The Earth has written this record for us and we're fortunate to have it," said Hughes. The more we learn from it, the better prepared we are for the challenges we're engineering on the planet for ourselves. Today, 